Hi, fourth graders. It's Miss Parker again. Um, this week, we are going to be reading a nonfiction text. And as we read, we want to be thinking about how the author organizes the text. So authors use text structure to organize information in nonfiction text. Problem and solution is one kind of text structure. It presents a problem, and then the author will explain steps taken to solve that problem. So as we read the text, Stephanie Qualick, um, inventor, you will need to identify problems and the actions taken to solve the problem. And you may want to listen for some signal words. Um, and those words will signal a solution such as consequently, or excuse me, consequently, and the word as a result, okay? Um, as you read, you can also create your own graphic organizer. And I put the keywords up there, consequently, and as a result, and I used a T-chart. So on one side, I would write the word problem, and on the other side of my T-chart, the solution. So I could write my problem, list one problem that I come up with, and then on the opposite side of it, I would write the solution from the text. I may also want to indicate the page number to help me as I go back so that I can cite my details from the text appropriately. Okay, so this is just a thought. Um, just take a piece of paper, fold it in half, create problem and solution on one side and solution on the other side. And there you have your ready-made graphic organizer to help you as you read to organize your thoughts. Okay, so as I said this week, we're going to be reading a nonfiction text, and this one is called Stephanie Qualick Inventor. And as we read, I also want you to be thinking about the essential question, how can invention solve problems? And as you know, right now in our world, we do have a problem. We have this virus that's happening. And we have inventors who are trying, maybe not inventors, but definitely people in the medical field who are trying to solve this problem. How do we make people feel better? if they get this virus. So um, a real world thing that's happening with a problem and solution. So Stephanie Qualick, if you could invent a material for a superhero, what would it be like? It would have to be light, strong, bullet resistant, and fireproof, right? Chemist Stephanie Qualick actually invented a material just like this. It's called Kevlar. Superheroes don't wear it, but everyday heroes like police officers and firefighters do. Becoming a chemist. Notice we have a heading. And we will see that throughout a nonfiction text heading. And that's going to kind of tell us what this section is going to be about. Okay. So from the time she was young, Stephanie was interested in math and science. She was not the kind of student who caused mischief. And she worked hard in school. Stephanie's teacher spotted her talent and talked to her about her careers in, about careers in science. With their encouragement, Stephanie studied chemistry in college. She had hoped to go on to medical school, but could not afford it. Consequently, Stephanie took a job working at a textile lab. She planned to save up enough money from her job so that she could pay for her medical school. At the lab, she discovered that she had a genuine love of chemistry. She learned how to make chain-like molecules called polymers that could be spun into fabrics and plastics. Stephanie enjoyed doing experiments so much that she decided not to go to medical school. Here we have another heading, okay. A strange liquid. 
1964, Stephanie's lab supervisor asked her to work on making a strong, stiff fiber. The United States was facing a possible gas shortage and scientists wanted to help. They believed that if you could reinforce tires with a lightweight fiber rather than heavy steel wire, cars and airplanes could use less gasoline. Stephanie began experimenting by mixing polymers. One day, she made an unusual solution or mixture. Polymer solutions are often thick like molasses. However, this solution was cloudy and watery. Stephanie brought her, stra her strange liquid to the worker in charge of spinning liquids into fibers. He looked at Stephanie's solution and laughed. He thought it was hilarious that she believed it could be made into fiber. It looked too much like water and might even clog the spinning machine. But Stephanie kept urging him to spin it until he finally agreed. When he followed the procedure, a strong fiber began to form. Stephanie's head spun and she felt dizzy with excitement. And here we have a timeline. So a timeline of achievements. In 1923, born in New York, I'm sorry, in New Kensington, Pennsylvania, in 1946, earned a degree in chemistry from Carnegie Mellon University. 1964, discovered the fibers up for Kevlar. 1971, Kevlar first marketed. In 1995, inducted into the Inventors Hall of Fame. Kevlar is used in cars such as this solar racing car. Here we have Stronger Than Steel. Stephanie tested the fiber in the lab and found it was fireproof. It was stronger and lighter than steel too. With these qualities, she believed that the fiber could be turned into a useful material. She was right. The material became known as Kevlar. After Stephanie's discovery, it took almost a decade of teamwork to develop Kevlar. Some people spent hours on the telephone with the patent office. Others had to think of ways to use and sell it. Nowadays, Kevlar is used by almost everyone. The president and other politicians wear protective clothing made from it. So do lumberjacks, firefighters, and police officers. Kevlar is also used in tires, bicycles, spacecrafts, and skis. By developing Kevlar, Stephanie found a way to make protective clothing and equipment that is both light and strong. Stephanie's invention has saved many lives over the years. She was inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame for her work, and her photograph has appeared on a book cover and in advertisements for Kevlar. She says that she never expected to be an inventor, but is delighted that her work has helped so many people. And here we have a photograph with a caption that says, firefighters wear suits made from Kevlar. So, we need to think, what problems did Stephanie's invention solve? And then we may also find in the text that Stephanie may have had a problem of her own that needed to be solved, okay? So as we read uh, the next story for this week, I also want you to be thinking about um, our text structure of problem and solution, okay? And those key signal words such as consequently and as a result to help you with determining where the problem and solution relationship are in a text, okay? Bye, guys.